got Somdev Dev Verma joining in on the show. Som, hi, the guitar gives it all away. <laughs> the guitar does give it all away, man. Yeah, it's uh, thanks for having me on here, Raman. Thanks for having me on here. Uh, it's 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 fun. It's fun to do something different, you know. Once in a while, uh, come on talk shows and actually bring a guitar on. <laughs> and I mean, I guess the quarantine kind of allows us to do that, right? But uh, thanks for having me on here, man. Real pleasure. It's a pleasure. We've had some good times together, buddy. Uh, you know, when we've done studio shows, I in fact have to tell everybody that uh, when Som was playing in the Chennai Open, the ATP, uh, what is now of course the uh, Maharashtra Open. But at the Tata Open, uh, the, the way it's called now, but so made the finals. Yeah. And while you were playing in that tournament, I was actually sitting up in the commentary box. It was quite a <laughs> quite a walk up those steps, buddy. <laughs> Dude, uh, first of all, can you believe that was ten years ago? More than ten. Two thousand nine. Yeah, more than ten. Yeah, two thousand. Yeah, nine. Eight. Two thousand nine. Two thousand nine for sure. I, I won't forget that. I won't forget the year. Maybe you will. You've done a bunch of commentary, but uh, but yeah, man, that was pretty special. 2009 was actually the first time I played in the main draw of the Chennai Open as well. And you know, growing up in Chennai, that was crazy. That was a crazy time. Unbelievable stuff. Yeah. You made the finals. What a what a fantastic run you'd had uh, that that year. Of course, uh, you know, there, there's just so many stories about your uh, exploits during the Asian Games as well, where you had two gold medals, the singles and the doubles. It's a different doubles pairing today, though. <laughs> it was a different double, doubles pairing, and uh, I mean, while 2020 was uh, sorry, while 2010 was really fun, obviously, about as successful as an Asian Games could have been, you know, given the, given the situation uh, for us at the time, uh, for for the entire team, for for, for Team India, we did really well. Uh, but I will say the 2010, right? So 2018 Asian Games. Was right. when we did a lot of work together, <laughs> and that was just as memorable, man. Because, uh, because I mean, uh, you know, it was a new experience for me to sit in the studio with, like, with for, first of all with pros. Because you know, the one thing people don't realize is how difficult the job in the studio actually is. You know, and uh, I think kind of just being around the studio, being around guys like uh, guys like you. I mean, there was there was some really good guests we had. Ayaz Memon was a fantastic guest. Boria was around. And uh, and literally we talked. We all we did we we, we talked sports for two weeks. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Sandeep so was, was there. Sandeep was there. Raparna Bhopat was there. We just had a uh, Trupti was there a, as well. So we had a great time. Yeah. 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 We did. We really had a good time. Yeah. 2010, when uh, that that those two gold medals came for so that was in Guangzhou in China during the Asian Games. We were there for coverage and. Boy, were we scouting around for food that we could eat after a while? <laughs> we were in the media village, yeah. which was right next to the games village where you guys were. So you just had that yeah. picket fence in between. It just kind of used to sneak across, get those interviews, yeah. get the chit chat going in the evening. That was good fun. Yeah, and I, I, well, I, I will say this: after after the singles gold medal, um, the Indian team treated us to a really, really, really nice Indian meal. You know, and I think it was well earned. I think at that point I was well earned. Of course, you know, it, it was. was yeah. <laughs> so we had a we had a good time, man. Guangzhou has good memories. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, today this show is about uh, about jamming together, and a lot of people who didn't know this know it now. So, of course, doesn't just play covers like I do. So, actually plays uh, his own music. He composes music, composes his own songs. And and well, I think you had a show yesterday, didn't you? How did that go? Yeah, just a few days ago. It was fun, man. It was fun. So you know, I began the songwriting journey probably like three or four years ago. You know, I've always played the guitar. Uh, uh, when I was in college, is when I picked it up, and then playing in front of people kind of became, you know, a, a little bit of a of a thing, right? In college, you would go to a bar. And uh, you know you would you would go with all your friends, and regardless of how you played, people would cheer for you. You know, so uh, yeah, well, that's quite a contradiction, sir, isn't it? <laughs> if if they were your friends, you know, uh, so it was it was it was really it was just a fun and fun time for me, and and that's kind of when I got introduced, I would say, you know, to kind of playing the guitar and like trying to learn more songs, and you know, obviously then we did a little bit more Beatles and Bob Dylan and things like that. Uh, uh, but but yeah, I think that's kind of where it began. But the songwriting journey began pretty much when I was done with tennis. Okay. You know, yeah. So I, I mean, I retired in 2016, which I mean, once again, makes me feel funny when I say I've retired. I'm like 35 years old. 
So I retired from one side of life at uh, you know in 2016, and then when you know naturally when I had free time for the first say, few four five six months, I did nothing you know, and then I kind of picked up the guitar and a few friends kind of encouraged me to write a few things, which was the hardest thing to do at the time. And now, uh, yeah, I, I, now it's you know over four years, and I've probably written about 30, 35 songs, you know. So uh, might be time for a might be time for an album soon. Uh, looking forward <laughs> to that, buddy. Um, any thoughts of what you want to call it? <laughs> what I want to call my album, I, I, I've, I've thought about a few things. Uh, so one of my songs is called Half Step Down. Um, I remember and, there was a band uh, that you know that used to play during the time I was in college, and they were called Half Step Down. So that's interesting. Oh really? Yeah, back in wow. my college days. Yeah. So Dude, I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't. I mean, your college days. So you, you're what? You're like ten years, nine years old with me, seventy-six born, right? Yeah, buddy. So I'm like forty-three, turning forty-four this year. Yeah, I, yeah. So seven. Uh, so I'm talking about yeah, ninety-five, ninety-five, ninety-six, ninety-seven. Well, now you've you've just motivated me to find another song uh, album name. Because <laughs> I mean, I can't do that. Now that I know, I can't do that. But uh, I'll I'll come up with something, man. I'll come up with something. I don't know. Uh, all the songs are. Uh, I mean, not all of, all of them, but most of them are pretty much uh, self-reflection songs. One or two love songs in there, you know. Uh, and but but yeah, most of the songs are self-reflection and you know, very folksy stuff. Very folksy stuff. You talked about the Beatles, yeah. so, so uh, you know this is a show where we've got to jam, and we get someone yeah, like you right. who can play the guitar, who can sing as well as you do. And let's do this, buddy. Let's have a let's have a track. Let's, let's do, do a Beatles track. <laughs> you want to start off with? Okay, you want to start off with like uh, yesterday? Yeah, let's do that, buddy. Because we're talking about yesterday and what happened in the day gone by. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so this is what happens when you get a good TV presenter. Presenting any show, he'll find a way to make it work. All right, Raman, let's give let's give this a shot. Yeah, let's do that. Let me just get. You know, it broke my heart. I just put the capo on the classical guitar, but I did it. I said, okay. <laughs> Level. Let's talk about stuff that people don't know. About. Yeah. So I've got a rapid five for you. Okay. Are you All ready? right. Well, uh, I'm ready, bro. But I got a rapid five for you too. Oh dear. Okay. Uh, let me see. Back I, well, you. I mean, you said you. You're the one who said, right? Like this is not a regular show. So I mean, I'm just taking my chances. All right. Let's see how this goes, buddy. Set. Okay. Cool. Okay. Let's set. You. You go for. You go first. Uh, I want to see how it's done. Yeah, you sure, you sure, you're going to chase it, whatever I throw at you, you chase it down like you did during your playing days, buddy. <laughs> Let's okay. see this, man. Let's have some fun. Uh, Florida or hometown? What, what do you prefer more? Florida or hometown? Uh, depends on what I'm doing, but generally hometown, man. Because I don't have to worry about food. <laughs> Okay, and dogs, and dogs, and dogs. And, oh yeah, let me. This is another one. Since you've already let that cat out of the bag, not the dog out of the bag. And dogs, he, he's a dog lover. How many dogs do you have? Six, five, four. Well, my in my parents' house we have 
about six or seven dogs. Wow. And here in Chennai, we've rescued two. We, I, I, you know what? I might bring him on in a bit. If you, if you're patient, yeah, I'll sure. go find them and bring him on. Of yeah. course, of course. But okay, okay. Rapid fire, rapid fire. Yeah, Let's rapid go. Fire, Let's focus. Okay, so that's one. Number two. Uh, what are the other two interests about Somdev Dev Varma that the world does not know about? We're talking about tennis and now music. We know about it. What are the other two interests about Somdev that the world doesn't know? Um, I like to surf, but I can't swim. Uh, that's a problem. That's a problem. <laughs> my, that's a that's a problem. Um, and I, and my uh, Shivali, my wife and I have had many of arguments about that. Uh, but I promised her that I will try and learn how to swim. But dude, right now it's so hard to learn. Where where am I going to find a pool? Right, so I got to jump in the ocean. Even so, if um, you find a pool, but it's Corona times, so you better stay here. I know. I exactly my point. So so the ocean's open. That's what I hear. So, uh, so yeah, I've been surfing and uh, okay. So two things, right? You yeah, said is surfing one. is one. Uh, I mean, favorite team Manchester United. Oh, we got something in common there. Yeah. So oh, nice. all right. Yeah, favorite team Manchester United. So at this point, I'm just thrilled that. Uh, hey, dude, we're still on rapid fire. We keep yeah. getting distracted. Yeah, correct. So, so we just keep, went down two questions, but he still have three three shots to go. Okay, okay, okay. Now at this point, I, okay, okay. Are you gonna finish or do I? Okay, you finish. Okay, well, okay, well, no, no, no. Let's 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 have you uh, chip in as well. So let's do this. Uh, okay, uh, fine. Uh, when was uh, your first? Uh, the the question was when was the first? Do you remember the first TV gig you did? That I bombed. That that bombed. <laughs> <laughs> that was the twist. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, because that's a fear of mine. That's a fear of mine. That's a fear of yeah. mine, right? Because when I'm on TV, I'm like, ah, not that bomb, but like you know that you can remember making a small mistake or something like that. Yeah, I, I'll tell you. There was a there was a time. This was when I had um, you know done about a couple of years of TV, and we had um, I was doing this for the national broadcaster. So my co-anchor okay. kept getting the name of the INB minister wrong. It was uh, oh Sushma God. Swaraj at that time. <laughs> Who was INB minister, the late Sushma Swaraj, and she kept getting it wrong while she was practicing in the uh, in, in the makeup room, and she was supposed to introduce her. We used to do this live show together. So, you know, she said it five, six, seven, eight, ten times. You know, she said, "Okay." So she kept saying Sushma Swaraj, Sushma Swaraj, and I said, "Listen, you'll get both of us fired. <laughs> There's no way in which you can call her Sushma Swaraj." So I turned around and told the producer, "I said, please." You value your job. I want to do a little more TV now, so let me introduce her. Uh, so she was getting it wrong. I said, "Listen, I'll, I'll, I'll introduce her." So there you go. She's on the set. Sushma Swami, Sushma Swaraj comes in and she sits down. And on the show, I introduce her. And ladies and gentlemen, today we've got a very special guest. This, that, and the jazz. We have yes, what I said. Sushma. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you right everybody was probably just making so much fun of you man uh, especially you know, yeah. my wife turned around she looked at me she's like okay there you go but the but I still could recover I said yeah you know I was such a big guest that even I'm tongue tied today so like, yeah, well you. done well done well done okay my next question to you uh, what's your favorite cartoon growing up My favorite cartoon growing up, Tom and Jerry. Growing up, as in classic. Every any time, even even after growing up, I love my kids uh, yeah. watching Tom and Jerry. I'd probably sit down with them in case they're watching a series, and I just watch. Nice, yeah, nice, so nice. And my third question is: right? uh, If you had to mail the top three bands of all time, if I had to rate, rate no, it, no, name the top three. Name the top three bands. Uh, just Who bands or individuals will will work as well. And anyway, anybody, anybody, musicians, whoever. Uh, uh, Pink Floyd, one. Sure. Great. Yeah. Uh, two, I'd say you two, just because of the kind of revolutionary stuff that Bono writes, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And uh, yeah. three, just for a, but just the simple reason that the lyrics mean so much in terms of emotion, I'd say Sting. Some okay. Yeah. So that's that's my yeah. top three. But I'm going to throw this back at you because you kind of slipped in the extra question. You pick your top three. Your top three. 
the my top three, my top three. Uh, so number one for me uh, would be Dave Matthews Band. Oh, super. Uh, so I, uh, so I mean, I went to college at uh, the University of Virginia in Charlottesville, and um, that's where the band is from. Wow. You know, so um, and one of the guys in the band actually happened to be a big tennis fan, and so he came out. We became friends, and I went to I've, I've been to about 25, 30 live live Dave shows, oh. and uh, it's. Every time you go, it gets better, you know. And and uh, yeah, man. And so it, it actually it's interesting that you pick those three bands as well, because I've always believed that the bands that can go out and do killer live shows night after night after night, there's something special about them. So true. You know. So Dave Matthews Band, Beatles. Okay. And the third one, I would have to say. Uh, I'd say uh, just an artist. I would say Cat Stevens. Cat Stevens. Cat Stevens. Yeah. So it's very close between Cat Stevens and Bob Dylan, but Cat Stevens, I think, takes the cake. So, whose style of music have you been really influenced by? When somebody starts composing, there's obviously some sort of uh, you know influence that one draws while while uh, playing their music. Yeah, for me. Uh, uh, Dylan, I mean, I, I, I consider like for me, it's not like uh, uh, I think it's more of uh, it's it's more lyrical for me. Okay. You know, I I'd like to focus on my lyrics and um, and so Dylan has to be up there. You know, and I, and I also consider myself if if any kind of musician, I would say I would lean more towards the folksy side. You know, uh, and singer songwriter stuff. So Dylan. But uh, you know, on the uh, on the newer stuff, there's a, there's a few great indie folk bands out there. One of them is called Bright Eyes, mm -hmm. uh, and they've come up with some great stuff. And and uh, you know, Rolling Stone magazine actually said Connor Oberst, who's the lead singer of that band, they said he's probably one of the best lyricists of our generation. Young guy that just comes up with insane lyrics, and so uh, you know, I, th I think you know these guys, Cat Stevens did. They're, they're for me. They're everything, man. The way they've kind of figured stuff out is unbelievable. I'm sure there's, there's a whole lot that's gone into 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 how you've uh, you know gone about making your music as well. Okay, now my turn to ask another question. Now we're three, uh, you know, we're three all. This three all, three all, three all. Yeah. So we've got two more. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> what's been yeah. the What's been the one moment in your playing career that you will never forget? Because of how embarrassing it was. Ah, <laughs> uh, because of how embarrassing it was, man. I've missed a lot of smashes on top of the net. Ah, uh, because of how embarrassing it was, dude. One time, one time we were playing. Um, I mean, this is not embarrassing. This is just funny. Yeah, so one funny, time we were yeah. playing Let a Davis Cup. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so one time we were playing a Davis Cup tie in Korea. In Korea, okay. And this was 2014, and we had. We had never beaten Korea in Korea before this. This was the uh, you know? uh, Asia Oceania playoff, yeah, Group One level. Group yeah, one I level. think it was a fi yeah, it was the finals of the playoff. So like basically, whoever won that match would, would have a chance to qualify for no, would, would, would have a chance to qualify for the World Cup. One more match. Right. Okay. So then you play like the random. World Cup qualify. You yeah. get to the qualifying stage. Right. So we are playing Korea in Korea, and there's a couple good players that they have. And uh, so anyway, Friday finishes, Saturday finishes, and now we're on Sunday. And India is up to one. I'm, I'm River singles. We're, we're up to one, and uh, <coughs> I got to go out there on Sunday. And uh, actually, on Friday, I had probably one of my better Davis Cup wins. I beat Hong Chong, who later on, who was who was 18 at the time, or maybe 17 or 18 at the time. But like you know, two years later, a few years later, the guy made semis of Aussie. He was top 20 in the world. Wow. And at the time when I was when I, I was at the time I was playing him, I remember the coaches. I, it was really close, man. Three close sets, but I think I was down set points in two of the three. Okay. So I mean, su super tight, right? And I and and uh, so I knew I was, but but the guy's ranking wasn't high, but he was really good. Okay. You know. Um, See, so and these so, guys also uh, have this capability of just kind of they had so much stamina. You you thought that these guys could stay on court the whole day and they they'd still be as fresh yeah, yeah. as daisies the next day. No, no, these guys are, I mean, uh, uh, Hong Chong is a special player, you know, very, very special player. One of the best players in Asia, like top 10 Asians ever. Right. And he's only like 25. Um, but anyway, um, 
so the next day we were playing this match and I'm playing Lim uh, from Korea. I think I, I, I lose the first set. I'm winning. I'm winning the second set. I'm serving for the set or some, something like that. And dude, this has never happened to me ever before. My shoe, the sole, literally just breaks off. <laughs> and I'm just standing, and standing over there, I'm like, what the hell? And I look around, and thank God, like that morning, I was just in the, you know, in the, in, in the room getting ready, and I was like, okay, fine, what do I take? And while leaving, I saw another pair of shoes. I was like, yeah, maybe just take an extra pair. And ne- I, like, I've never used an extra pair of shoes. But I've always carried one, you know that kind of thing. Right, just just uh, safety. Yeah, you always have a, you always have an extra one, but you never use it. And this is the first time, and like we had to take like ten minute time out. They had to go back to the van, find my shoes, come back, and I'm just sitting over there looking at the referee, he's pointing at his watch, and I'm just like, dude. <laughs> but yeah, that's probably that's probably like one of the most random like times where I felt like I had no control. You probably won't you know never have heard the end of that uh, in the locker room. Yeah, Even from your own yeah. Place, then. <laughs> Yeah, whose shoe comes off? <laughs> but I told them, I said, I said, I said it's probably because I was running more than you guys, you know. So it's cool. <laughs> yeah, and that's probably yeah. right as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So one more. Uh, okay, you got you got one more, and then I got two. No, you ask one. Let, let me hold one back. Let me hold one back to for, for for the last bit. Go for it. Okay, I got I, I got a good one for you. Tell me the movie that had the most influence on you growing up. It's a tricky one. I really have to think. One movie that influenced me most when I was growing up. Not, oh, no, not growing up, but you know, twenties or third, even twenty twenty five. That you just watch it like wow. I was never a, uh, I was never really a movies buff. You know, surprisingly or otherwise, I never was very fond of watching TV or, or watching movies or going out and watching movies. I never never really looked forward to it. I was more happy being on yeah. a playing field. Playing something yeah. than sitting in a hall or sitting in in front of a television set watching a movie. So, yeah, this one's a this one's a tricky one. Uh, yeah, probably probably Sholay. Yeah. I mean, uh, this is a classic. If I were to pick one, yeah, probably Sholay. Just the way it was yeah, like that's... engrossing, you know, engrossing movie. And you felt so bad when revolutionary at the time. I felt so bad when Amitabh Bachchan died. Yeah, I felt so <laughs> bad. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, dude, it's not an easy question. There's so many movies, not so many good ones out there. Okay, I'm, can I ask you my last question? Go for it. Okay, this is this is this was actually my favorite one. I was waiting for it. Tell me, um, in your opinion, who's the best sportscaster, sports presenter in the world that you like watching? That's an interesting. One. But I'd say Alan Wilkins. You know, I won't really have to Great talk too much about it. You know, too much about it. Um, I think I, I love the way Alan Wilkins, with his very casual demeanor, uh, you know, he doesn't really make a fuss about the the broadcast. He, he's 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 relaxed on air. You can't really see him stressed, even if you know all hell's breaking loose in the PCR. If, even if they come out from Malaysia. <laughs> He is just so relaxed, and, and you can make him do multiple sports. He can, he's just as good at tennis. He's fantastic with cricket. Oh, yeah. uh, he does golf. So you know he's got that ability to do multiple sports coverage. So I think I think Alan. Will you know, I I agree with you right uh, on that one, man. I think Alan's a special guy, and uh, India is lucky to have someone like him, huh? Yeah, it's yeah. surprising about stories of uh, how we remember uh, names of people who. You know, um, the guys in the office. You know, the pantry boys will come in and serve, or or maybe the odd producer. He's going to meet just once, and you know, uh, he'll still remember them. He'll still remember yeah, Alan's Al- special. Alan's a great guy. Okay, uh, I've got one question. Okay, last one. Ready? 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 Let's do this. Okay. What you gotta tell me is. Uh, In your family, who's that one person that you always looked up? Someone who uh, has been a you know either a role model or a guiding light, or somebody you felt closest to. Who's been the one person in your life? Okay, let me let me broaden the horizons and say family or friends or one person. That one person. Yeah. 
Uh, I mean, friends wise, I would say uh, probably my coach, uh, my my strength and conditioning coach. You know, uh, Milos Galicic is his name. He's Serbian, and uh, we started working together about one month into my pro career. Okay. You know, so like right away, pretty much, because I right as I turned <laughs> pro, I, I knew I, I knew I needed a strength coach. Uh, and and you know, we lucky enough the guy who was coaching me at the time had a good relationship with Milos in the past. Yeah. So he brought him on board, and um, and from that point on till now, I think we've been. Incredibly close, but he's also a guy that you know I'm. I'm happy to go to for advice. Should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? How do you think I should approach this situation? And you know, I think that stemmed from that kind of level of trust and respect. Kind of stemmed from the fact that both of us were very, very invested in the work we were doing while I was playing. Okay. You know, so it was com. So it was like totally. Uh, you know, we we both wanted the same thing. And we both worked very hard towards doing it, and that developed such a such a strong trust between us that we knew that the other person would never kind of would would always have your back. You That's know what I'm saying? So that that yeah, so that that for me has been like probably a very very special relationship in many ways because he's also someone I look up to. But also someone that's very, very close, you know, and I and I hope the feelings mutual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, otherwise, you'd just be free falling, yeah. wouldn't you? You just kind of you're yeah. wondering what's happening. You need someone who, who's there. You, you know, you can always fall back on. Yeah. But talking about, yeah. talking, wow. about free, yeah, talking about free falling. Let's let's do this track. I, what... I know. I know you love playing this track too. <laughs> She's a good girl, loves her mom, loves Jesus, and America too. She's a good girl, crazy about Elvis, loves horses, and a boyfriend too. Yeah. It's a long day, living in Reseda. Just hearing you talk, I think both are great. Thanks, man. Thanks a lot, Raman. By the way, great job with this. I I had a great time being here. Thanks. Really different, really fun, and great job. Keep it up. Keep all of us entertained during the lockdown, man. You're doing awesome. Thank you so much, buddy. And this is not goodbye because uh, you know. I'll get you back on the show. I mean, we'd love to hear more of what Somdev does with the guitar. Maybe I'll try my hand on the piano. There, there we go. Now we'll be jamming again. Wow! <laughs> Look forward to it, buddy. Take care. Cheers. Thanks, Raman. Take it easy, man.